In this colorful card duel, both sides try to place their cards alternately so that as many rainbows as possible are formed. Be careful not to fall into these shadows and use the power of light to form complete rainbows. Tactics, the ability to combine and a good memory are the keys to victory. Welcome to my review of Rainbow. Hey everyone, there is a Thekas. Today I'm bringing you my review of Rainbow. A huge thanks to Piatnik for providing me with a review copy for the game. Rainbow is a two-player game where you try to assemble a rainbow in front of you. But you need to be careful. Your opponent is working on exactly the same row of cards with you. The goal of Rainbow is to collect more cards than your opponent by strategically placing cards with different colors in front of you. Before I show you how to play the game, let me guide you through the setup first. Don't worry, the setup is incredibly simple. First shuffle all cards well and put them in the card holder. Then put the card holder into this hole in the game box. Pay attention that every player can only see their side. The other side needs to be kept secret for the respective player. Then each player draws three cards from their side and takes it into their hands in such a way that each player can only see one side of the cards. This is one of the main concepts of the game. You may only see the front side of your cards and the back side of the opponent's cards. It's the other way around for your opponent. And that's the setup of the game. The younger player then begins the game. Alternatively, if that's too boring for you, you can also roll 10d20 each, add up all results and subtract your age. The player with the higher number starts. There are several rounds in this game. In each round you take turns and attempt to construct a rainbow. Be mindful of the fact that there are 7 different valid colors in this game, but you only need 6 to construct a complete rainbow. Also, both players are working on the same rainbow, so this is something you need to take into account when playing this game since this changes up your tactics and strategy a lot. When it's your turn, you can play up to 3 cards, but you must play at least one. Before playing your first card, you may turn over one card that is already lying on the table. You don't have to do that though. But if you want to play a second card, then you need to turn over a card on the table before you do so. It doesn't matter which card that is. These rules ensure that you always need to place and turn over cards in turns. You can never place or turn over two cards after one another. There's one more rule you need to know before your first play. Whenever you place a card on the table, you can always decide whether to play normally or blindly. Normal means you put the card on the table, showing the side that you know. Blind means you turn the card around and place it on the table with the side only the opponent knows. After each single played card, one of the following situations will occur. Everything's okay. There are only cards on the table with different colors. Black cards are an exception. I will mention those soon. Also, the white light cards are wild cards and can take the place of any color. There can even be different light cards in a row. After having played a card, you always can decide to continue playing cards with the rules I mentioned before or to just stop. Since you only have three cards in your hand, you can never play more than three cards in one turn. The second possible situation is the occurrence of a mistake. If the card you just placed has the same color as another card in the row, you lose the round. Your opponent receives all cards in the row and puts them in front of them in their own discard pile. Then you begin a new round. The third outcome is the shadow card. If you place or turn around a black card in the row, you immediately lose the round. Your opponent again receives all cards in the row and puts them in front of them in their own discard pile. And again, you begin the new round. The last possible outcome is the rainbow. If you place the sixth card with a color still missing in the row, you completed the rainbow. Congratulations! You may take all six cards in the row and put them in front of you in your own discard pile. Your opponent begins the next round. The game ends immediately when one of the two players is not able to draw up to three cards at the end of their turn. Then you both count all the cards in your discard piles. The player with the most cards wins the game. If you both collected the same amount of cards, you can play another game as a tiebreaker. If you don't have the time to play another game, you can also roll 9d12 and add the age of your youngest sibling. If you don't have a sibling, you just add zero. The player with the higher number wins the tiebreaker. And that is how you play the game Rainbow. But what do I think about the game? Honestly, this is one of my most favorite games published by Piatnik as of now. The game is perfect when you're looking for a quick game. It has minimal rules, is set up instantly and plays quite quickly. If you know the rules, you are done in about 10 to 15 minutes. Despite its simplicity, the game demands quite a lot of strategy and tactics. Do you play a card blindly, so the opponent only knows one side of the card? But then you run the risk of playing a color twice since you don't know the color on the other side of the card. When do you play black cards? How many cards do you play? Can you play three cards in one turn? 
There are many more questions that make up your strategy and can greatly affect the game. A few other games for Piatnik I own come on boxes that are way too large for the amount of components in the boxes. Notable examples are the Push Your Luck game Family Inc. that I already reviewed on the channel and the wonderfully delightful Motorola. Not in this game. The game box is designed very well for holding the card holder in place. If the box was smaller, it might not do this job as well. This is well done. The game is very tightly designed. Most games are very close and both players always had the opportunity to turn the tides. The balancing seems quite well done. Apart from all these aspects, there's hardly any constructive feedback from my side. I would have liked the cards to have slightly better quality. They are quite standard and that will definitely show over time. Also, it is actually possible for the white light cards to reflect some of your card's colors if the light is shining directly onto them. But you would have to really want to look for that. And nobody likes cheaters. All in all, I thoroughly enjoyed the game. While it's not my most favorite two-player game of all time, it is quite high up there. Games are quick and it's easy to teach, set up and tear down. Also, it has a very small footprint. I highly suggest the game if you're still looking for good two-player games unlike a lot of other games I know. Well, you made it to the end of my review. Thank you very much for watching. I highly appreciate it. If this is the first of my videos you're seeing, why don't you head over to my channel and watch even more videos. There's a lot to find there and I'd love to see you there. Alright, I'll see you in the next video. Take care everyone and cheers.